Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Esther Eckhart and today I'm going to teach you a yin yoga class that will work mostly on your spine. So um, yin yoga holds poses for, today we're going to hold the poses for three minutes, but you can decide to hold them for longer if you like. You can work your way up to five, perhaps even six or seven minutes. Um, let's start. And along the way I'll explain a little bit more what yin yoga is, but it we do poses that are all on the floor today. So we're going to start with butterfly pose. So we're coming to sit with our soles of the feet together. This is Karen, she's demonstrating together with me. And if you find it difficult to sit with a straight back or to move your lower back forward, then sitting on a blanket or just helping the blanket at the back, sitting a little bit on it, just helps with that tilt like Karen shows you there. On an in-breath, just finding length. And on an out breath, you can just allow yourself to come into a forward bend. You can bring your hands together or just on the floor, depending where you end up. And you can also allow your head to hang. Yeah. So if possible, your forehead would end up just above your feet, above the insteps, more or less, that's fine. And with yin yoga, you're, find, you're trying to find your first edge, that place where you find a little bit of resistance and you honor that, so you're not pushing through that. And yin yoga is also about finding stillness in the pose. Letting go of perfection, which can be difficult if you're used to working hard and getting things right. Let go of that and just be. And to keep the mind calm, you can keep focusing on your breath. So it's totally fine to let your head hang. At the same time, if that doesn't feel right on the neck, you keep just your head lifted a little. There's absolutely no wrong or right. You find a pose that suits your body right now. And some of you might be all the way up here, which is absolutely fine. And keep going back to your breath. Aware of the in-breath. Aware of the out-breath. Keep letting go into the pose. Releasing, not forcing, not pushing, just letting go, letting gravity do the work. So rather than working on the muscular structure with yin, we work more on the deeper lying connective tissue, the ligaments, the joints, the bones. And we do that through the long holds. The muscles stay soft. It's like giving your body a massage. We're stretching the meridians. So you, some people compare it to an acupuncture session as well, because you're working on the different meridians. So that three minutes are passed, you can very gently engage your abdominals, muscles, and then very gently coming up on the next in-breath. And extending the legs. And 
And just placing your hands behind you for a moment, just leaning back, allowing the energy to flow in the legs. You've worked on the hips, a little bit the legs this, with this pose and the forward bend, wor bend worked already on the spine. And then from here we are coming into a full forward bend. So feel free to sit on a blanket if that's something you prefer to do or just help it, let it help with that tilt. And then on an in-breath, sitting up straight, relax your legs for this one. So you do not have to keep your feet flexed, the toes up, like in the regular practice is mostly set. Just, just allow the legs to be. Inhaling, sitting straight. And then on the out-breath, you can gently walk your hands forward and allowing yourself again to come into that forward bend. And stop at your first edge. So whenever you feel the body resists a little, just stop. And then let time and gravity open the body further up so you can go deeper. So if at home this is too much and you can't bend forward at all, you can sit up higher on a blanket or even a few pillows. And you could also place something underneath your knees to make that pelvic tilt. I could show it to you here. So at home, if you're not sure, you can have a look. So it, you could be like this as well. And again, finding stillness in the pose. Being with the breath. Reminding yourself there is nowhere to go. There is just where you are right now. And that's perfect. And breathe. It could also be nice to have your head resting on something. I'm just going to let you try that, Karen. So rest your forehead on that. Yeah. So you have a little bit more support. Or resting on your arms like this. And keep letting go. Relaxing your jaw. Staying present to your breath. Softening. Being aware of the in breath as it comes in and of the out breath as it goes out. And sometimes it's nice to Breathe a little deeper through influence your breath a little bit by breathing deeper. You also keep your mind more focused. And then you can gently 
prepare to come up, drawing your abdominals in a little and placing your hands on the floor on an in-breath, slowly help yourself out, taking your time. And just feel your legs for a moment, maybe just move them a little bit, loosening them out. Yeah, whatever you feel like doing. And another nice way after this pose is just to place your hands behind you, either your fingers pointing towards the feet or if, you, if your shoulders are tight, maybe this works better with the fingers pointing away. You bend your knees and we're just going to lift the hips up a few times and bring it down just to get the energy flowing again. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, releasing back down. Just three times or something. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, back down. Last one. Hold, exhaling. Inhaling. And gently back down. Okay, you can stay there for a moment. Keep your hands where they are. Fingers pointing away, maybe. And just allowing the knees to drop from one side to the other side. Windshield wipers, as they call it. And then we come into a dragonfly. So we sit with our legs stretched out. Um, Karen, you can face forward. And Karen is going to sit on a blanket just to help her with the extra tilt in her hips. And she's coming off the mat because her heels need the support of the mat. Sometimes it doesn't matter. And for some people it actually hurts to have the heel on a hard surface. So if that's the case, make sure that's not the case with you. She's going to grab blocks which will help her to be comfortable in a forward bend. And once more, on an in-breath first, just finding length, preparing. And then on an out-breath, you can come into a forward bend. And the same principles apply. You can relax the legs. Yeah. Unless it hurts, if the hamstrings hurt, you could actually keep the thighs a little bit active. Or the knees, if the knees hurt, the back of the knees, you can keep the thighs a bit active to protect them. But if that's not the case, let go. So like Karen shows you, you can make yourself comfortable. You can use two blocks, you can use four blocks. You have your legs out exactly as far as feels right. So there's a stretch, but you're not overstretching. And you can just let go. You can keep your shoulders a little bit away from the ears. You can let your head hang if that feels good for the neck. Otherwise, keep your head lifted a little. And again, returning to the breath. Allowing the body to be soft. And in yin yoga, you have the time to observe your tendencies, the tendencies of your mind. What does your mind do when you're quiet, when you hold a pose for longer? Observe it. Staying present to the breath. Every time you feel your mind drifts off, bring it back. Again, in yin yoga you have the chance to break particular patterns or habits you've got. You can interrupt the flow of the mind. Bring it back to the here and now.
And some poses will also bring up particular emotions, like frustration or fear. If something hurts, there could be fear. Or if you feel a tightness, there could be frustration. And it's about observing all that, not about believing in it. It's not about pushing it away either, just observe it. Feeling all of these things are not the problem. But trying to keep it away from you, not feeling it, resisting it, is the problem. Usually when you allow whatever is there fully, it resolves by itself then it moves through you. And that's something we can practice actively in yin yoga and then take it into our daily lives, take it off the mat into the world. And then again, very gently engaging your abdominals on the next in-breath, help yourself out. And then come to a seated position again with your legs outstretched in front of you. You can help your legs in by holding the backs of the knees if you need to. Yeah, and just relaxing the legs. Hugging them a little, rubbing them a little. Maybe moving the feet around. And we can take an inclined plane for a moment, you can bring your hands behind you and just roll the inner thighs in a bit, yeah, exhaling, draw the pelvic floor up a bit and on the in-breath pressing into your hands, lifting up, that's it, stay there for a moment, pointing your feet, keep your inner thighs moving down and in, opening your chest, inhaling and on an out breath, gently coming back down. And then we prepare for the Sphinx, so you can lie with your head facing this way. Mm -hmm. And the Sphinx can be different levels, you can be with your elbows right underneath your shoulders, or you could be a lot lower, so you could have your hands way more in front of you. If your lower back is tight and painful, then you can go as low as this, where you're, or even holding on to your, just above your elbows and having a very mild back bend. So you find that place that works for you. Again, working with your edge, not forcing it. So you can have your arms like Karen, with the palms down, or you could have your palms together at the top like this. It's all good, whatever your body feels good with. You do encourage your shoulders a little away from the ears, and for the rest you let go. And again, finding stillness resisting any temptation to move around. Unless you have to, because you're in pain. But if not, you resist and you stay still. Fidgeting is also a way that the mind uses to distract you. And to not listen is also, again, a way to break habits. When you can resist, you come into a place that is more quiet.
And if this is easy for you, you could also decide to go up a little bit higher on your elbows. For example, use a blanket, blanket and go here. can stay here for a little bit longer, also lifting the legs. So you're just going to bend your knees and just bring the feet up one at a time. You could have your feet resting against each other or not. See what your body prefers to do. And we stay here for one more minute. There's a little bit more work going on in your lower back. And just staying with whatever is being brought up by the pose. And breathe into it. No resisting, no craving for anything else. This is your practice to really accept and be with what is. When you give up resistance to any emotion, any feeling, any sensation, that's when you relax. Because it means you're not looking for anything else anymore. And then you can gently bring the feet back down and just come out for a moment. So you release, you can rest your forehead on one side, your head on one side, or your forehead on your arms. And then you can bring your hands underneath you like this, bring the arms together at the top, and draw your right knee in next to you. Yeah, and you can look over to your right and just be here for a moment, breathe. This is also good for the kidney. Go back to your breath, stay with the breath. Gently releasing your right leg. And then coming into a higher sphinx. So you can come back onto your forearms, that's it. And see for yourself, maybe this is just as high as you want to go. And maybe you could place this underneath your elbows and see how that works for you. that even? Yeah. Good. And any time you feel that this is too much, you just come back to lower again. So this is a higher sphinx. And in Sphinx, you can sometimes it can be also nice to just let your head rest like that. 
which is also fine for you to do if that's something you like. And you can also go even higher if this feels easy. You can decide to take seal pose instead. And you just come on to your hands. So I'll show you the version of the seal pose if you if that's something. So you can at home you could tempt this and then decide that this is too much and then come back to a lower version. You do not want to feel any pinching, any pain in your lower back. That's not what we do in yin yoga. We have no pain. We find our edge, but no pain. Stay with the breath. This is very important for the health of our back. We work on the arch in the lower back with this pose. And it's when the arch in the lower back begins to disappear when we get older, is also usually about the time that back problems start. So it's good to do work to Keep the lower back arch, staying with the breath. Yin yoga is also the type of yoga you do when you want to increase your flexibility. And it really works. If you do yin yoga for two weeks in a row, you will find a major difference in your flexibility. I promise. As well, it really helps to quiet the mind. If you do a lot of active yoga, a lot of muscular, young, vinyasa flow style yoga. It can make your mind active, even frazzled sometimes, if you are the type that has an effect of that. And then yin yoga can really balance that. I can really recommend it. Also, Sometimes the body can become a bit hard from the yang style of yoga and the yin yoga makes it soft again. Like you've just had a deep massage. And then very gently coming out. You can rest your head on your arms again. And use your breath as a counter pose. So basically, expand your lower back with your in-breath. And then draw your left knee in. So we do the other side. You can look to your left as well, just for one minute. Stay present, stay with the breath.
then you can gently release your leg down again and help yourself up, taking your time into a child pose. And it's the complete opposite stretch, so sometimes you just need to take a moment. There's no rush. Don't expect to be able to... Some people can drop into child pose straight away, I can't. And you don't have to. So you just take your time to go into the opposite stretch. And just be with the breath in child pose. Allow the body to soften. Find the child pose that's comfortable for you. So you can have your arms alongside the body. Or you could have your arms outstretched in front of you. Whatever feels good. You can have your forehead resting on the floor. Or perhaps your head to one side if that feels comfortable to you. Just being with the breath. So again, if you can give up the resistance to whatever is moving through you, sensations, emotions, feelings, it resolves by itself, they, you relax. So if you can relax with confusion, for example, you end up with clarity. You come out on the other side, just by itself. It's a law of life. But you really have to first completely give everything permission to be there. And then you can place, bring your hands in front of you. Again, engaging your abdominals and slowly coming out when you're ready, helping yourself up. And then we prepare for saddle pose. So you can come and sit on the top of your mat. And you can sit on your heels. And you're going to need, some of you will need help with that. So the first first part of this pose is just sitting. Yeah, you can sit like Karen on a blanket or a block, or you could just sit on your heels, which is also perfectly okay. So this is the first part of the pose, just sitting straight. Then you can place your hands behind you, yeah, and just lean back onto your hands. So maybe some of you, this is just as far as you go. If you can go further, like Karen, you can go onto your elbows. And then perhaps, you need more than that? I will put this underneath. And then it's nice to have something supporting underneath the shoulder blades and your head. Okay? So I could have pushed the bolster all the way to the sacrum. I didn't do that on purpose because you will have more lower back arts now. And that's the idea, is to get to work on that. And if that's comfortable, you could even bring your arms overhead and hold on to your elbows. And maybe that's just too much. And maybe you just prefer your arms by your side. Again, we hold this pose for three minutes. And maybe at home you could lie flat. And again, just be with whatever this pose brings up for you. And you definitely do not want to feel any pain in your knees with this. If you do come out, take an easier version. And if this is unavailable for you completely, you can decide to do another Sphinx pose. Like we did in the beginning, lying on your belly, on your elbows.
stay with the breath. So if you can just be with whatever this pose brings up for you, and if you can allow that fully, without any resistance, for example, if you can relax with insecurity, you will find confidence if you can really relax with it, if you can just allow it to be. Stay with the breath, keep softening. Remember, this should feel completely okay with your knees. Maybe the knees are together, some of you the knees will be out to the sides, that's fine. But make sure the knees are okay with this. Stay with the breath, stay with the sensations, being okay with whatever is there. Then the three minutes are past. You bring your arms alongside the body to start with. Holding on to your legs. And then come back onto your elbows. Yeah, you take your time. One hand at a time. Help yourself up. Good. And just bring the knees together. Yeah. That's it. Come on, hands and knees. And then come onto your forearms. Drawing your belly in a bit. Yeah, reaching your tailbone away. And then extending one leg, keep the toes tucked. So you extend one leg behind you, knee straight. Yeah. Toes on the floor. Yeah. yeah. And the other leg for crocodile. So look at me, Karen. All right. Yeah. So it's plank on your forearms. <laughs> That's it. Draw the belly in. Make yourself strong. Shoulders on the back. Lift your side waist up. That's good. Just staying here for half a minute. Keep breathing. Just a... Put the body back together again. Okay, that's enough. You can bring your knees to the floor. And lie down. Yeah. And then you can roll onto your back. For a twist. Okay. So you can... Extend your arms out to the sides. And then bring your knees in towards you. Okay, take a moment there. And then cross your right knee over the left. That's it. And if you can, hook your foot under the calf. And some of you will not be able to do that, that's fine. Inhaling. And on the out breath, you can bring your legs over to your left into a twist. Yeah. And I've put some blocks underneath Karen's leg, so you can do that at home. You can support your legs, and maybe it's not necessary. So if Karen feels she can go deeper, she can remove 
the blocks. And that goes for you at home as well. And you can bring your other arm over your head. So you get that extra stretch in the arm. That's it. Looking over to your right. And again, we stay here for three minutes. So it's just trying what feels right, or whether you need the blocks or not. With twists like this, sometimes the more flexible people are the ones that need the support because sometimes you lack the stability for this to be a safe thing to do. So be mindful. Don't think just because you can do it that it's right. Also close your eyes and feel. If it feels right, it's fine. But if you feel a little bit unsure, then support your legs. It's a good thing to do. The higher your knees are towards your top of your body, the higher the twist is in the back. So it's not necessarily needed. So if your knees are a little bit lower, it's more in the hips that you're working. And if they're higher, you go up higher in your spine. It's both good. Stay with the breath. Again, being aware of what this pose brings up. If you can be with vulnerability, if you can totally let that be, give it space and breathe into it, then the other side you'll find strength and perhaps even indestructibility. Be with the breath. Your left hand can also be on the legs. Just wherever feels right. You can bring the arms out to your side again. And perhaps you already have to untackle your knees here. And perhaps you can just bring them back to your chest just the way they are. Whatever feels right, don't force your body in any way. Just take a moment to extend your legs, both of them, and feel the body. And this is where the body can begin to feel vulnerable. And it means the joints can feel vulnerable in yin yoga. And it's a good sign. It means you've worked them. So allow for that feeling. Remember that on the other side is strength. If you can just let it pass through you completely without any resistance. And then we prepare for the other side. So if you've used a block or blocks, place them on the other side of you. Bring the knees into your chest. Cross your left knee over the right and perhaps hook your left foot underneath your right calf. And again, this is all ifs if your body allows you to. And then you can allow the legs to fall to the right. And you can bring your left arm overhead.
Your right arm can be out to the side or on top of your left leg. Stay present to the breath. And if you notice the mind running wild again, deepen the breath to help focus. Keep observing, keep being the witness to all of it. Keep going back to the breath. Back to staying present to this moment, to your senses. Staying present to the breath. And then gently bring your arms back alongside the body. Coming out your own way, whatever way feels right, using your core, your abdominals. And again, extending both legs for a moment, just to feel the body. Bring both knees back into your chest, one at a time. Place your hands on the knees, one hand on each knee, and just make circular movements around the sacrum. Just to massage around the sacrum. Keep going. Keep making circular movements around the sacrum, just to help loosen out the back. And make sure you've gone both directions. So when you go one way, you go the other way. And then feel for yourself. Do you need to stretch in any particular way to be able to relax in a moment? And if you're fine, then you can prepare for the relaxation. Do you want a blanket?
So at home as well, if you want a pillow underneath your head or underneath your knees or have a blanket, then take your time to So, lying with your eyes closed. I just want you to completely relax. To let go. And feel what these poses have done for you. Feel what the yin yoga has done for you. If you can relax with whatever is there, but especially with Restlessness, which is something we all know, intrinsic to the mind. If we can relax with restlessness and allow it to be, then you'll find peace. Just be whatever is in the field of your awareness. Whether it's your breath, whether it's a sound, whether it's a thought. Just observe it, be with it. Full acceptance. Keep letting go.
remaining present to what is. You can stay here for as long as you wish. May you be peaceful, may you be relaxed. Namaste.